Hey everybody and welcome to this year's first Just Three Questions and February's Just Three Questions. Um, you may recognize the gentleman beside me if you watch our YouTube channel stuff to begin with. He is Justin King, one of the many King family members that go to our church, uh, all wonderful people and we're excited to have y'all here. Um, even the ones that don't come to church, we love you guys also. But um, he is my co-host in many of the videos that we have. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, he's one of the guys that pop up at the very beginning of our YouTube uh, channel because he helps me out with so much. But today, he's none of those things. He's the individual I get to interview. I get to talk to him about some stuff that maybe we haven't talked about on camera. We've talked about, yeah, but they haven't heard you talk about it. Yep. So like always, we're going to ask him just three questions and we're going to uh, get to going. So without further ado, Justin, we're going to jump right in like we normally do. First question to everybody is how did you come to know Jesus? Okay, so you know, maybe y'all don't know, I grew up in church. Mm -hmm. My dad is a pastor. Uh, we actually, I'm trying to do bullet points for this type of video, but um, keep it brief. We moved to North Carolina when I was about five years old, which wow. is when my dad got called into the ministry. I didn't know that. Where were y'all before yeah, that? We were in uh, Florida. Okay. I did not know that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I have faint images or images of like palm trees and that kind of stuff uh -huh. from my childhood. Um, but yeah, we moved here and my dad pastored a church for, I think it was around 11 years, then felt like the Lord was like, okay, you retire from that church. And so he had kind of an in-between time of working in the school system. Mm -hmm. And it was during that time that we ended up coming to the Clinton community. Oh, so that's kind of where we're at now as far as uh, after my dad worked in the school system for a while, he uh, got called to another church to pastor. So he, now he's currently pastoring another church. Mm -hmm. So some people might be like, well, why don't you go to their church? It's like, because in the in-between, this is where some of me and my brothers got planted. Gotcha. So that's, that explains that. But as far as coming to know Christ personally, so grew up with a lot of testimonies, grew up with a lot of teaching on scripture, uh, my dad being a pastor. And uh, as a young child, I experienced Jesus being real for the first time uh, after I prayed to him and was like, hey, I'm really afraid of the dark. <laughs> I have lots of nightmares. Uh, you keep saying, don't be afraid, you know, be anxious for nothing, that kind of stuff in scripture. And I was like, Jesus, if you're real, it was some form of that prayer. If you're real, I need your help. And uh, long story short, I started to pray that kind of stuff. And it was really cool to me as a young kid because... I began to have like peace at mm -hmm. night. Um, I have I have this kind of funny image to people, but to me it was something really cool. Where uh, at the end of that process, I would literally go into the bathroom at night when it was dark and just be like excited and pumped that I was walking <laughs> into a dark room and not being afraid, you know. Um, and so as a young kid, I was like, okay, God, you're real. You've answered my prayer. You know what I mean? And I think it was more so in college, where uh, I tend to think of it as like a season where God showed me he was real, and then a season where God showed me he was good. Mm. Um, and so in college, the Lord uh, had a lot of opportunities. Like I said, we're trying to keep this video brief, but I had a lot of opportunities uh, where the Lord encountered me and uh, um, helped me deal with a bunch of insecurities that I had mm -hmm. and uh, just really showed me that he, he's not only real, but he cares, Aww. that he's intimate, that he's good. And um, there's a lot to that, but those are the, the main points. And I think I would also say that college was where I would say I actually came to the knowledge that I needed Christ as a savior. Gotcha. Not just he's a good person or a role model, a good teacher, but like, no, like I have sin and it needs to be taken care of in Christ. You so it went saying? from, a, um, I know Jesus and it's relationally because my dad was a pastor to I know Jesus relationally because I know him as my personal. Exactly. Uh, okay. Yeah. Come and that's on. cool, man. Yeah, no. And, um, that's awesome to hear. As a pastor, I hope my kids have similar kinds of <laughs> testimonies uh, in the sense of coming to know Christ personally. Now, the second question, like we ask everyone uh, else, is uh, very similar to, to, to the first of how did you come to know Jesus. What is Jesus saying in your life right now? So it may sound generic or simple to some of y'all out there, but uh, I tend to be very like goal-focused. Mm -hmm. um, I've always had... That's actually been part of my walk with the Lord is like learning to be present, learning to, um, one thing that he shared with me one time is like this phrase of just be, 
stop trying to produce all the time and mm -hmm. you know all that kind of stuff and so one thing he's been saying this season for me is to um, really uh, focus on the journey huh. um, and so not to just think of the two percent which is the goal you know you get to the end of the journey and you're like oh we made it we got to the goal we were pushing for but him, him being like most of life is in the journey and learning to be present in the journey, learning to enjoy the journey um, and take advantage of it. You know, it has ups and downs, but to really be with him, to be with others in the journey. Um, and so that's one thing that he's, like I said, it may sound simple or weird to some of y'all, but to me it's significant because I come from that history of like the goal, the get, goal. Get you know there, what I'm saying? Let's get there, let's get there. And the Lord's like, no, slow down. Like, the journey is most of life. Enjoy the process. You know, um, we're reading a, a book uh, as a staff. Um, man, I just uh, replenish. I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, I think Pastor Dwayne gave it to you too. Mm -hmm. There's a chapter in it um, that talks about that, about how too many times uh, people think vacation doesn't start till you get there. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about uh, him and his family went on vacation with another family, and they were doing like a road trip to get to where they were going. And they get, the author said that normally um, we we would get in the car and it, and it was focus time until we got there. He goes, but this other family, anytime they saw like a historical sign or something like that, they would stop and pull off on the side of the road or mm -hmm. take the exit. They'd stop and read it. And he said at first it got frustrating because it was like, we're wasting time. We're wasting time. There, we, yeah. can't ha we can't start a vacation. Yeah. He goes, but this other family, their vacation had started the instant they got in the vehicle. Mm. And he said, so I learned that stopping to enjoy those moments didn't take away from the vacation it added mm -hmm. and too many times in our life like you were saying we're like let's get to the to the destination so we can get it stuff done mm -hmm. instead of enjoying that the the trip to that destination yeah and um it's funny you say that because personally for me there's a lot of god was like when's the last time you stopped smelling the roses yeah so, yeah hmm. it's really good and i and i think that's a, a lesson everyone sort of needs to hear and the final question, as we give uh, everyone, is where do you feel like God is leading you in the future? And now, again, this has been a very tricky question for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I'm not asking you, you know, oh, are you saying God's taking you to a new place? But if you have any inclination, where do you feel like God may be leading you in the future? I don't care if that's a year from now or five years from now. Well, um, I'll just say, so on the personal side, I'll just say that uh, in that being present in the journey, mm -hmm. uh, the Lord is helping me to kind of test out some different ideas. And I've been doing it for a while now, for those who know me, but uh, just different potential avenues of career and uh, um, having to do with like business ideas and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So the way I operate is I kind of like investigate it and kind of like sit in the thought process of it for a while, maybe test some of it out. And then if, I, if I'm like, oh, this doesn't really work for me, then I move on to another idea. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now. So that's the personal note of things. Um, as far as like being with this church, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm very excited because uh, we just had our once a year young adults retreat a few weeks ago and just had a really good time um, talking about a bunch of different things, Bible studies and that kind of stuff. But suffice it to say, I'm just excited about what that weekend kind of set up in us as a young adults community um, and for our church because part of it wasn't just young adults focused it was like hey as young adults we want to connect more with the different age groups of the church mm -hmm. like we want to um, <clears throat> be able to connect maybe with other churches in the Clinton community you know mm -hmm. um, and so there's just a bunch of stuff that we talked about a bunch of Bible studies that we had that set us up for the future. Awesome. And I'm just very excited about that as a young adults leader. Obviously, I help serve with you with videos. And yeah. So there's different stuff like that that I feel like the Lord is still like, yeah, continue doing that and to see where he's going to take us with it. I'm very excited. So. Yeah, um, if people didn't watch the uh, first video of this month and of this year, we talked about how we know the future for the YouTube channel, at least what... Um, what does that have to do with the Bible and a little bit more looks like for the rest of the year. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that is exciting. It, 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 there's direction and it feels like there's a lot more of a specific direction and less of a fog. Yes. You know what yes. I'm saying? And it's like cohesive. It's building towards, mm. you know. 
and not and that doesn't just go for our YouTube, but like in general, I feel that in the church. So I agree. Mm. Um, and then finally, not so much a question. I give everyone the chance to: Is God been laying something on your heart that maybe you just want to share? Yeah. It, it, it just sometimes people just are like, "Man, God's been saying this to me, and I haven't had a platform to share it." So if there's mm. anything on your heart that maybe you just want to share that you were like, "Hey, man, I really want to tell some people some stuff." Feel free. Take the next few minutes. It's uh, all yours, brother. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was thinking about this before when Pastor Eddie had asked me to be a part of this video. And one thing that I just want to say, once again, it's going to sound simple, but to all of y'all that serve here at the church, uh, I just want to say thank you. Mm. As a fellow servant, as a fellow um, uh, person who maybe is leading in certain capacities or serving in, in others, uh, one thing that I've really been able to experience here and that I really appreciate is the the reality of us operating as a body. Um, I remember there was this pivotal moment in my journey here where I was like, wow, like I as a young adults leader don't have to worry about Propel Kids. Mm -hmm. Like I as a young adults leader don't have to worry about the tech team. You know what I mean? It's like the idea of how that each of us taking on the different roles that we're taking on, saying yes to the Lord's call for each of us specifically, mm -hmm. As a body, we are able to do all that we're able to do. And as an individual member, I am blessed by you guys um, taking on what God has for you. And so that's one thing I was thinking about. I was just like, you know, I, I think that I just want to be better at appreciating each member, you know. And, uh, and that's why I say thank you to you guys. And just to help us all see that blessing of the burden is not on one person. Mm. The burden is not on three people. It's on us as a church together. And when we operate like that, and, you know, I will caveat this with, you know, we have some ministries where we're probably like one row deep of leaders and we would like to be two or three rows deep, you know, to where people can alternate yes. more, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, uh, and not get burnt out because that's a real thing. Um, but... So thank you for those who are working now. Thank you to y'all who haven't started working yet, but you're praying about it and you're considering where can I work, where can I serve and volunteer, you know. And so, but that's the thing that's been on my heart is like I really, really, you know, I get to work in different areas uh, with young adults, youth. Uh, sometimes I help with youth and then obviously videos. But all of y'all that I get to brush with, that I get to touch paths with as far as uh, serving, I just from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate each one of you and... I see and recognize the sacrifice to say yes to serving, you know, and uh, you guys are seen, you guys are felt, even if I don't work directly with you or serve directly with you, I feel your, uh, your sacrifice, I feel the benefit of you saying yes, and so that's what I wanted to say. Thank you guys so much. Yes, and we agree with that, and uh, we thank you for all that you do. Uh, personally, me and you've had a great talk not too long ago, and you heard my, my heart for it, so we thank you. Well, brother, um, because you're the guest, you don't get off scot-free. We ask you to pray for us as we close out, if you will. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we thank you for letting us uh, in a little bit on the journey that you are on right now, uh, presently, uh, the journey that you've been on and, and what's led you up here, and hopefully the journey that soon will be uh, ahead of you. So if you will, pray for us real quick, man. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for uh, this opportunity just to come and share some like Pastor Eddie was talking about. Lord, thank you for um, the different seasons that we're each in. Um, Lord, uh, some of us need that moment, like for me, where it's like, you're Lord, God, you're like, hey, slow down a little bit, <laughs> appreciate the journey. Uh, maybe some of us need the other side of that, like, hey, there's some specific goals you should be working towards. <laughs> you know, um, I don't know, like, Lord, you, you work so specifically with each one of us in the That's different fine. seasons that we're in. And so, Lord, I just pray that whatever you're speaking to us as individuals, we would hear it clearly, we would walk in it, we would apply it. Uh, Lord, I thank you for each person, like I said, that is serving or that is considering serving. Lord, uh, thank you so much for the blessing that you decided, you, God, decided to do ministry through a body and not just through some, like, uh, just like one or two people. <laughs> you know, Lord, mm -hmm. you were like, each person has a role. Each person has gifts. Each person has stuff they can give. And Lord, I just pray that we would all be more conscious of, Lord, the blessing of that, that it's not just on me or any other one person, 
Lord, but together we as like a fully functioning body, um, just the amount of things that you're allowing us to be your hands and your feet uh, in our church and in this city. And so, Lord, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you for the gift of being with you in your work, knowing you. And uh, Lord, we just pray this blessing on each person uh, listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you again, brother. Um, and uh, I guess, you know, for everyone else, we'll be seeing you in about a week when we go into our next video, which is going to be a little bit more. Uh, that's uh, part of this month's series on image. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're excited about that. But guys, if no one else has told you, let us be the ones that tell you. We love you. We believe in you. And we believe God has a great plan for your life. God bless.